Rub up your engines! Well, the Ford Mustang E, the electric SUV, really has nothing to do with the Mustang, but they like to use the name to try to sell the stuff, is losing half of its credit for electric batteries because they're not sourcing them all from the right place. You know, the government's got this thing. If they're made in the United States, you get the full credit of $7,500. Now you're only going to get a credit of $3,750. It's half made in the United States. I don't know. This whole thing is just absurdity. You know, I mean, let's face the whole thing. All of those Mustang Mach-E's are made in Mexico, not the American economy. It's the North American economy, right? <laughs> They're making it in Mexico because it's cheaper to make them there. You know, I suppose they'll be whining to the politicians now to try to get the full tax credit back, right? It just shows the absurdity of what's going on with electric vehicles, what they're trying to claim here, there, and everywhere. Oh, is it made here? Is it made there? Where does the credit go? Oh, we're trying to support American workers. Yeah, they're really supporting American workers by building them in Mexico, right? And you know, they're only doing it because it's cheaper labor down there. That's the only reason. Now, you lose a little bit of credit for it. Hey, they're having a problem selling those things. Ain't gonna help them. They'll be more expensive. You won't get the credit you got before. But me, hey, I'll tell you, I wouldn't buy one. I wouldn't buy anything made in Mexico if I had a choice. I know the quality down there is poor quality. They're just making them there because it's cheaper to build them there. And now, for whatever reason, the batteries aren't coming from America. Enough of them, so you only get half credit. The whole thing is half-assed, if you ask me, the whole set. Well, Volkswagen said it again. They're recalling 143,000 vehicles because the airbags won't work. And here's the insane part of it. It turns out when a person sits in the seat, somehow the airbags can be deactivated. They're supposed to be activated when somebody's sitting in it and not activated if nobody's sitting in it, right? <laughs> But in this case, when the person sits in it, they're backwards airbags. Well, if there's someone there, we'll turn ourselves off. Only Volkswagen, right? Now, this is over 140,000 Atlas and Atlas Cross Sports vehicles that Volkswagen makes. Now, the Department of Transportation is saying, we advise people not to use the front passenger seat until you get your car fixed. So I guess they say these Atlases are big and can hold a lot of people. Well, in this case, nobody should sit in the passenger front seat because when you sit down, it might turn your airbag off. Now, if they couldn't make a bigger screw up, I don't think they could. I mean, <laughs> the airbags are supposed to save the passenger. In this case, the passenger sits on it and the airbag gets turned off. I guess they put the switch in backwards. I don't have a single customer in the last 30 years that bought a Volkswagen that ever bought another. They said, yeah, that was a horrible car. I'll never buy another one. So <laughs> take my advice. Don't even get into that rat's nest. Don't buy one in the first place. Well, here's one about how Subaru doesn't stand behind their products, okay? Micro sends me an email. And he says, Scotty, I got a 2017 Subaru Outback that I take care of. A Subaru dealer sold me a case of CVT fluid for my transmission. The case they sold me, and he's got a picture of it, contained a few quarts of gear oil by mistake inside. The mechanic caught one of the erroneous quarts, but he said he couldn't be sure if any of the other gear oil went in my transmission. I drove it a few days, the transmission blew. Subaru said it's not their fault, and I'm looking at 8,500 bucks for a new transmission. I called Subaru of America's advocates the department, and they were of no help. Not sure who they're advocating for. No one wants to assume responsibility. Yes, that's so totally typical. Yeah, advocacy. Yeah, they're advocating for themselves, right? They screwed up, sold you the wrong stuff. That is too bad. I had a customer years ago have a similar problem, but what it was was they had bought a battery there, right? They we'll get an original battery, put it in. Well, they put it in the car, and everything melted. It turns out that the battery was made backwards. Even though it said positive here and negative here, it was built backwards. And it was the other way around. Even though positive said positive, it was actually negative. So they hooked it up the correct way. And then the dealer wouldn't do anything about it because they said, well, you should have checked the battery before you put it in. Now, who buys a battery and puts a voltmeter on it to see, gee, is positive really positive and is negative really negative? You'd find out because if you put them on, you'd see instead of voltage on your reading, it would be negative voltage and you'd know, oh, something's wrong. I'm not going to put it in my car, but who even thinks of that, right? He had to take him to court. He won. He sued him. He had all the proof. He brought me the battery, and I measured it and said, yes, this battery was built backwards. Negative is actually positive, positive, negative. Even though it was labeled the way it was built, it was built wrong inside. So here we go again. Subaru not standing behind people. I get more letters from people telling me the problems they have with Subaru dealership and Subaru of America not standing behind their products. And when they do make a mistake, they won't own up to it. And they sold them the fluid. They sold them the wrong fluid. They should stand behind it, but oh, nobody's going to take responsibility. Well, maybe they will now after this video. Let's hope, Subaru, you step up to the plate and give this guy a transmission because you sold him the wrong fluid in the first place. Here's an interesting Lexus story from Supra 46. As he says, IS500 is supposed to be
be a perfect car. But I got one. The transmission hangs when it's shifted down and kind of slams into first gear. They gave me another transmission, even though it only had 2,000 miles on it. Later, it started doing the same thing again. I left it for one month and one week. And they said, oh, that's how those eight-speed transmissions are. Just for kicks, I drove another one at the lot, and it didn't act like this. I don't understand. They replaced the transmission the first time because they said, oh, it's not supposed to act like that. But now, 2,000 miles later that they put in, it's acting the same way. And they're telling me, oh, this is normal. That's how those things work. Lexus didn't give me any other explanation. As I said, Lexus does not care about their customers, their products anymore. It's a lost cause, in my humble opinion. I'll take my business somewhere else next. All right, yeah, I've seen this so many times. <laughs> They'll say, oh, Oh, yeah, you know, that's normal. Well, they screwed up because in the first place, they replaced the transmission. It's only 2,000 miles on it because it wasn't acting right. And then later, it started acting the same. But they said, oh, that's normal. That's how they act, right? They're negating their own analysis because they replaced the first one. <laughs> they replaced the transmission because it was acting up. But when that started to act up, they said, well, that's normal. <laughs> I mean, did you get one put in, you know? Here's the thing. I don't even know if he had the one put in. Maybe they changed the oil and filter or did a programming. I have no idea what they did because I'll tell you the truth. Over the years, I have had more customers have engines and transmissions replaced, and they were never replaced. I even had some customers who were so pissed that they got their little Dremel and got a diamond bit, and they would put a little mark on their transmission or their engine, right? And then when they get it back, oh, yeah, we replaced your engine. We replaced your transmission, and they look, and there's that little mark still there showing that they didn't replace it at all. Sometimes they painted it or something, but they didn't actually replace the thing. They just flat out lied. So in this case, I don't know. Maybe they didn't replace it in the first place and they reprogrammed it or something and now it's acting up again because the reprogramming didn't fix it. Often reprogramming these multi-speed transmissions does not fix the underlying problem for long. They're just trying to cheap out that they got a transmission problem that they know about. So they changed the software to try to hide it. So it doesn't do it as much, but in this case, it came right back a couple thousand miles again. So, and I gotta agree, the quality of Lexus isn't what it used to be. I have to see that. I have customers bring me cars that are a few weeks old to check engine lights on in a Lexus. That never used to happen. Obviously, their quality is starting to go down, like just about everything else these days. Well, if you think Big Brother is watching you, well, realize. Tesla big brother is if you own a Tesla. It turns out that Tesla workers shared sensitive videos from the cars of the customers that were in there to be worked on. You know, they got those cameras that are running all the time, right? It turns out that these private camera recordings were shared in chat rooms by the Tesla workers. But Tesla said these recordings are anonymous. Now, Tesla themselves, to quote them, we assure our millions of owners that their privacy is and will always be enormously important to us. The cameras are designed from the ground up to protect your privacy. More lies from Elon Musk and his Tesla factory, right? They'll tell you all kinds of stuff. They don't care. But the truth is, these cameras were being watched by other people and shared. And they also had crashes, road rage incidents. Do you think you got privacy in one of these things? Guess again, baby. Any camera that's running. Anybody these days with the internet and hackers is going to be able to get that information. And even though they said, oh, it's private, well, get this. Seven former employees said, and I quote, the computer program we use to work can show the location of recordings. So, <laughs> you think you're private in your Tesla? Guess again. Here's how I love that the ultra rich don't know anything what's happening in our society. Uber CEO became an Uber driver and he did like a hundred rides, right? Undercover Uber driver. And he said he was surprised at how rude some riders can be. Now he did it in San Francisco. So already we got California rude rama right? You're not important to them. You can't make them money. You can't give them an acting job or whatever, right? He was so surprised at how rude people were that they ignored him and they kept talking and they made him wait while they were doing drive-in food or going into the drugstore to get something, right? What does this guy think? Do these people that run these corporations have any idea of what's actually going on in the real world? You know, they're living in La La Land, and then they come out, oh, I'm so surprised at how rude people are. Hey, buddy, wake up and smell the coffee. People in this country are getting ruder and ruder on the internet with their cell phones, you name it. People are rude as can be. What is this, the 18th century or hackney driver? I right, thank you, Lord, for giving us a ride. Yeah. Maybe you should have talked about how he didn't make that much money driving for Uber, right? The workers get a little more pay. He's out of it instead of saying, I'm surprised at how rude people are. People are rude as can be. Maybe in your ivory tower they aren't because you're the CEO and everybody's kissing your rear end at the meetings telling you how great you are. You know what? In the rest of the world, 
<laughs> we don't care about you, you know? And if you're driving us around in an Uber, if we really knew, like if I was in a car with that guy I knew, I just said, hey, you know, you're really ripping your drivers off, buddy. Why don't you do something about that instead of riding around and finding out that people are rude, you know? And they're not making all that much money. Gee, he didn't talk about that, of course. He only talked about, oh, the ride is so rude. Ooh. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.